Alan here, uh, update on the project to replace the uh, BLDC motor on the McKinney Mechatronics uh, 1610L with an AC motor, uh, inverter duty motor, and uh, Hitachi sensorless vector drive. So, um, auspicious day, the, uh, the mill basically is making chips again, as you can see. Uh, I've been making some chips playing with this uh, piece of aluminum here. So, got the flood coolant working, uh, finished off the modifications to that piece that uh, were necessary to get it to fit on the top there. And, um, you know, got the VFT all tucked away down in the bottom. Uh, so, just to recap, you know, the reason why I started down the road on this project is because I had no end of trouble uh, with the brushless linear motor that came with the McKinney and, uh, and the electronics. They were glitchy. Uh, the... the Spindle motor controller uh, had died uh, four times. This is the, I believe, the fifth board, uh, the fifth spindle control board that was in the machine. So this is the speed controller for the brushless linear DC motor. Um, and then there's the, uh, there's the brushless motor. And, you know, this had died several times. Um, the new one, this is a version 2 of this spindle drive, was much more reliable, uh, but it was pretty gutless in the low end RPM, low end of the RPM range, anything under 2500 RPM, and it just had no, no power, basically. It uh, would stall out um, on simple drilling operations, like drilling, for example, in 6061 T6 aluminum, uh, full 1 inch, one inch uh, depth of cut on a 50 thousandths. Uh, Peck cycle on a can drill cycle, um, you know, it would stall out at the bottom of the uh, hole, basically, um, you know, using feeds and speeds from a G-Wizard. So, I mean, that's something that you should be able to do, you know, with a size 21 drill, which is what I was using. You should be able to do that, no problem, with a, th with a three horsepower spindle. Um, the mini mill will do that. The, that little Harbor Freight mini mill right there will, will do that cut, no problem. So, you know, there's really no excuse for this brushless linear motor being so gutless. There's something wrong with the controller or the motor. I don't know what, with the design in general. It's not reliable. And it's just gutless uh, below 2,500 RPM. And it's unusable for drilling operations and certainly unusable for steel, in my opinion. So uh, I decided to replace it. Uh, also, the electronics on the machine in general were glitchy. Uh, one thing it would do is, you know, you would um, go to uh, touch off the part to zero with an edge finder. Uh, so you'd put a uh, edge finder in and, you know, fire the spindle up to 1,000 RPM. And then you'd go to move the Z-axis down towards the part. Before you even got anywhere near the part, it would uh, spindle halt and, and, uh, and shut everything down and with a loud piercing, you know, halt alarm. Um, I talked to Phil McKinney about it. He said that you just need to let the spindle warm up, which is, you know, insane. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I had lots of issues where, uh, with the spindle RPM dipping. Um, so sometimes, you know, especially low RPMs, like a thousand RPMs, it would just periodically dip to 700. Uh, and you would even have, I even had issues where the spindle would drop to near zero and spin back up in the middle of cutting apart and not even like um, you know not doing a hard cutting operation or anything like a 50,000 depth of cut in 6061 T6 uh, and you know it'd be cutting along just fine and then you know like say 30 minutes into the part the spindle would would zip dip almost to zero and then spin back up and it would do that several times so all sorts of glitchy behavior with the electronics um, I've also had the steppers um, where, you know, you hold down the button on the keyboard to move the stepper in one direction, and the stepper motor would just continue to go in that direction even once you let the key off. Uh, so you'd let up off the key, and it would just keep going, uh, and you'd have to hit the e-stop to get it to stop. Things like that, just really glitchy electronics. Um, and so I said, you know, the, you know, what are my options, you know? I've got a $10,000 machine that doesn't really work and hasn't really worked since I bought it in 2009, you know, what am I going to do? I could unload it on some poor unsuspecting soul on Craigslist or something, but that's not really, in my opinion, the right way to behave, so I'm not going to do that. I could have a $10,000 boat anchor and, uh, you know, sell it for scrap or something, and, and I'm not going to do that either. 
So my, my, my option or the thing I came up with was just to fix it, you know. So, and that involved basically gutting the electronics. So on this machine so far, since I've owned it, I replaced the oiler because the oiler stopped working. I replaced the coolant pump because the coolant pump seized up. I've replaced the spindle motor. I've replaced the speed controller with the VFD. And um, then I've also replaced all the electronics and the main control board with a, with a kind of a more standard uh, CNC for PC control board, which is right there. And basically it's been completely retrofitted at this point. Also added some new digital Kelling stepper drivers uh, just because it made it easier to do the wiring. And also everyone said they're really nice stepper drivers. So that's basically, you know, that's basically the recap on why I did it and what I've done. So basically all new electronics. And so far I'm really happy with how everything turned out. Um, the spindle sounds great. It runs great. Um, and everything seems to be working just fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk through, show you the process as best I can um, on how um, I set up for a cut. And then also I'm going to show you, how, uh, show you the machine cutting. So this is just um, a test cut. I've been playing around. I'm probably going to do some more advanced cuts. Um, so the plan is on this little block of aluminum, I'm going to um, you know, true up the sides. And then I'm going to flip it over and face it with a facing tool. Uh, not all in this video, but in this video I'm just going to true up the side here. In the next video I'll do some facing operations with a face mill, a 1.5 inch face mill. And then uh, I'll do some drill operations because for me that was the thing that I found most disappointing about the old spindle was, uh, was drilling. Um, so we're going to test out the drilling and um, test out the face mill. Face mill puts quite a bit of load on a spindle and so does, uh, so does drilling. So. I think those will be good tests, and then maybe later on I'll try cutting some steel or something uh, as a demonstration, although I generally don't cut a lot of steel. So, um, yeah, so let me set this down. And we'll walk through the process. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my... Uh, Z height gauge, which is basically a um, dial, dial indicator attached to a tool holder. So I just use a uh, impact a Hitachi 18 volt impact cordless impact wrench for my uh, for my tools. So I'm just going to a predefined location on this that I pre-measured with a jig so I know exactly how how tall it is from the face of the spindle to this block when I when I uh, set the uh, dial indicator to the to this previously defined setting, and that's in my tool offsets. So I need to set my tool number to tool number one, and tool number one is the the Z height gauge. So um, the height of that, as measured in, in this little jig here on the surface plate, is uh, 7.160 inches. Once this is at uh, uh, 0 .500 uh, inches, so let me go ahead and dial that in. So as I get close to the number, I'm just using single step mode to get it right on zero, and then once it's right on zero, I just hit uh, zero Z, and then we zero at our Z height. So to go to single step mode, when you're, when you're moving the, the axes in uh, Mach 3, just hold down control, and that goes into single step mode. And you do one step at a time for each button push. So you go ahead and 
take this tool out now. All right, so the next tool, the next uh, thing I'm going to pop in is just a um, electronic edge finder. So it used to be when I would be doing this operation, you know, I would dial in my spindle speed of a thousand RPM, just like that. And then as soon as I went to go move the uh, the axes, uh, it would uh, alarm on the old spindle, and basically the only way you could reset it was to shut the machine entirely down and restart it. Um, and obviously with the new setup it's not doing that, so that's progress as far as I'm concerned. Turn the, the speed down here on my jog, so I'll go to my jog rate and set it to 1%. Go to my offsets page, I've got an offset set up in Mach 3 for the edge finder, so 200 thousandths. I'm just going to touch off on the, uh, on the side here. So that just starts going, uh, lighten up, and then I'm going to zero out that side. And then do the same thing on the y axis. And then once I've uh, set my part zeros, uh, I'll be ready to cut basically. So I've zeroed off on my part. So now it's time to swap in my tool that I'm going to use here. Now the code that I'm running is just code that I I got from the NFS wizards, the Newfangled Solutions wizards, the conversational uh, G-code wizards that are built into Mach 3, which are really, uh, really great. If you haven't used them, you should check them out and, and use them because they're really good for ad hoc you know, machining operations. So I've switched out to Tool 3, which is a three-flute uh, carbide uh, ZRN coated end mill, which is you know really good for cutting in aluminum. Which obviously this is. Um, I'm going to set my tool here to tool three. So the measurement of tool three, which was measured on this surface plate with the height gauge and the and the little jig, uh, is 4.5945 inches. So with the tool offsets and it, you know Mach three knows exactly what the Z height is um, for this tool or any other tool that I swap out. Um, because I have Z offsets in there for all the tools. So sometimes I like to verify just to make sure my Z height's correct. That's a one inch, one inch gauge block that lights up when you touch it. So I like sometimes to just make sure, double check myself. Touch up on that block. Just make sure that um, That, um, that my readout reads close to one inch basically and I know that I haven't made any errors. And uh, the reason why I do that is because I have made errors in the past, obviously I think we all have, where I've mismeasured the offset and the jig and or misentered it incorrectly uh, and you know buried a, a tool into a part prematurely causing uh, you know, tool breakage and things like that. So, you know, sometimes I just uh, double check myself, especially with a new tool, uh, just to make sure that I'm not doing something stupid. So, got our zeros set for X, Y, and Z. 
set my coolant nozzles here and uh, basically hit cycle start. Now what this program is going to do is it's basically just going to flatten the top of that piece of aluminum there. Uh, take, it's going to take 33,000 or yeah, 33 thousandths off a of pass at uh, 49 inches per minute. And the spindle is going to be going at uh, 5,400 RPM or full speed, basically. So uh, it's going to do three passes, so for a total of 100 thousandths. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cycle start here. First thing that's going to happen is it's going to pop up and ask me for tool three, because uh, that's in the code. Uh, tool three is already in the spindle, so all I have to do is hit cycle start again. And then the spindle is going to spin up. Now we're cutting. So you can see, spindle sounds really good. Cut sounds good. It feels like it's more rigid somehow. I don't know if you know that pulley before on the old motor was loose. That was probably causing some trouble. Um, but also, I think the additional weight of the new motor actually seems to be more rigid somehow. I don't know, it's weird. It, it definitely did not chew through the aluminum like this before. Uh, it just seems much more solid now. Could be my imagination too, but I don't think so. So that's it. Pretty, uh, pretty uneventful. Pretty straightforward. Um, I'm real happy with everything so far. I'm really happy that the machine's making chips again. I'm really happy that everything kind of worked the way I planned it. So I'm just really happy right now. Um, so yeah, um, great, great day. I've still got more work to do. I'm gonna. Um, the way the oiler is currently installed is not correct. I need to get a, the correct length of hose for it so that I can mount that properly. I need to uh, make a new control panel with a new e-stop and new power switches. Um, and I guess that's about it. Actually, I should probably go, do, go through and do my uh, commissioning you know, steps, do the steps per unit calculation for each axis and that kind of stuff. Uh, and also check the uh, squareness of the spindle to the table and all that good stuff. Haven't really done any of that yet, but uh, you know that's all pretty, uh, you know, pretty secondary stuff. I mean, it's making chips, and I can make parts with it again. So life is good. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be doing some more cutting videos uh, with some face op facing operations and some drilling operations uh, probably tomorrow because it's getting pretty late. So. That's it for now. Uh, more later.